I want to specially welcome us into this year's convention in Jesus' name. This year's convention promises a lot of spiritual, spiritual impartations. The Holy Spirit will be teaching us in various ways on various topics that will prepare us for the imminent rapture. As we all know that the central theme demanding our attention throughout this week is all about the time is short. The Lord gave me this topic that we need to treat it. And looking at the word in, ret in retrospect, you will agree with me that the time is short. The time we are talking about has to do with your own life, not the word, it, the word uh, itself, but your life. And you know your life is like um, a can-do. Your life is like a flower. A can-do is lighted and it seems as if it has the whole world in itself. It will never reduce. It will never burn out. But as time goes on, the light is burning and the can-do is melting. Gradually, it melts away. And the can do is no more. The can do finishes. Such can be compared or likened to the life of a man. And the same thing with a flower. When you plug a flower from its tree and you put it on the table, initially it looks like nothing is missing. It's very fresh, very attractive, and bringing out sweet, adorable aroma. But in the evening, go back to it, you discover that the flower had dried up. The, the flower had withered. I want you to understand that as you are sleeping and waking up, your life is gradually going and you are nearing the grave. Eternity is beckoning on you. Either you believe it or not, you're going to leave this world one day. But the only terrible thing about your departure and I from this world is that it could come at any point in time. It could meet us in any place but you just have to get prepared for it. You must live your life with eternity in view. Stop living your life the way you want and stop taking chances with eternal realities. You need to understand the topography of your spirituality. Otherwise, you are going to end up your Christian life in shambles. And if you face eternity with a falsified spiritual account, you are doomed forever. Your tears will just be beginning and it will never end. And that leads me to the first message I'm bringing to you, the generation of Sodom and Gomorrah. The generation of Sodom and Gomorrah is back. What they did in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah is what we are currently doing in this generation. Unfortunately, many ministers had forgotten that we brought nothing into this world. It is sure, it is certain, we will live with nothing. What is the most important thing for Preachers to preach is what they have neglected and will now major on the earthly mundane things, the ephemeras, the things that will not last till eternity, the things we met in this world and we will leave them behind after death. These are the things we major on at such a time as this. We've not been teaching rightly. We've not been rightly dividing the word of truth. Heaven is not happy. Angels are not happy. And of course, demons are happy. The devil is getting fulfilled on a daily basis. The devil is feeding fat in the church, over the church of the living God, because ministers gave him free hand. The devil is operating the way he wants, as he likes. Why? Ministers gave him a free hand in the church. But by the grace of God, from this day onward, in your life and mine, the devil will be recording major setback, major defeat, major disappointment in the name of Jesus Christ. Your life and mine will be producing joy to God and producing aroma to heaven that the demons and sins will not be able to, to find a foothold in our lives anymore. In Jesus' name, follow me to the scriptures. Let's read together the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1. 
Isaiah chapter 1, and I will read from verse 1. The generation of Sodom and Gomorrah. Isaiah chapter 1, from verse 1. The vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Ezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider her sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the law. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone astray. They have gone away backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. Talking about the church and we the preachers, we are sick spiritually. And the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. Look at the church. When last did you hear sound doctrine being taught on the pulpit? It's all about money. It's all about business. It's all about contract. It's all about this. It's all about that. And we have turned everything to money-making venture. Why? But wounds and bushes and putrefying sores, they have not closed. They have not been closed. Neither bound up. Neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land. Strangers defer it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Because of my time, let's jump to verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. You people of Gomorrah. The generation of Sodom and Gomorrah is back. Is back. Listen very well. In Genesis chapter 19, there the Lord sent two angels, or three if I'm not mistaken, to go and view the wickedness and atrocities, the iniquity, and of course the evils that the Sodomites have given themselves to. And when they got there, it was exactly what the Lord saw in heaven that they met on ground. And eventually, Lord persuaded these people. He brought them in and they slept in his master's bedroom and leaked out to him what was coming into Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says the next day they were lingering. They were lingering. Many ministers of our time lingers in preaching the truth. They are so afraid. They don't want to lose members. You gather them together in the church, but you are not showing them the way to the kingdom. Your members do not have names in the book of life, and you are not concerned. Are you an hiring? You are not a preacher. You are not a servant of God. He didn't call you. You know what you are looking for. Is it popularity you are looking for in ministry? Is it because you want fame in ministry? You want to gather crowds. I about saints. God called you to make saints out of sinners. God called you to call people into the kingdom, not to make them happy, not to pat them at the back and gather them in your church as a bunch of spiritual irresponsibilities. He wants you to teach them the way of the Lord and show them what lies ahead of them should they die in their sins. This is the primary reason with which God has called you. God didn't call you to go and make people rich. God did not call you to go and set the people free from poverty alone. As you are settling them you know, free from physical and earthly poverty, won't you dare to set them free from heavenly poverty too? If they make it in life, and after that they have no name in the book of life, you will discover that your work, your labor will be burnt up. 
you have no reward. That is, if God will not eventually send you to hell, because you cannot prepare your 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 church members for hell fire and expect God to allow you have eternal rest with Him on earth. That would be injustice in the sight of God. Where you sent your church members, where you prepare them for, that's where God will take you to when you leave this world. Repent, O oh preacher. Repent, O oh preacher, and come back to the truth. So they told, you know, Lot and his family, but they woke up in the morning and they were lingering. You know why? The attachment they had with Sodom and Gomorrah was just too much. The riches, the gold, the silver, the precious stones they had in Sodom and Gomorrah was just too much. They were contemplating within themselves. Are we going to leave these things behind? Who becomes the owner of these things? And yet, we labored, we labored, we labored. We labored so much before we could gather all these treasures together. And we are just going to leave them behind just like that. That was why they lingered. But the Bible says the angels was being merciful to them, just as I'm praying. As you listen to this message, whether you are a preacher like myself or you are a church member, the Lord will be merciful to you and point you back to the way of the cross, that mighty refuge. He will point you back there. Point you back there. And so they took them behind the city and they told them, escape for thy life. And look not behind thee. Escape to the mountain. They took them behind the city. This message wants to take you out of this world. This message wants to take you out of uh, satanic uh, deceptions. The devil wants to ruin your life, wants to kill you and make you a number one candidate in hell. Don't agree with him. Come out from the world. Come out from Babylon. Babylon is falling. Babylon is coming to a ruin. Babylon will soon be completely annihilated. Babylon will soon be completely destroyed. The anger, the vexation, God's indignation is much and it looms on Babylon. The present day Babylon, Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at the countries of the world. Look at the continents of the world. What they are doing. God is not happy. God is sad. God is sad over the world. Unfortunately, the church has joined the world. It's a pity. It's a pity. Sodom and Gomorrah is back to the world. Their practices and evils are daily staring us in the face. This is the end that the Bible talks about. The practices of Sodom and Gomorrah they are staring us in the face at this end time. As the rapture-ready believers, we must take cognizance of the practices of Sodom and Gomorrah and avoid them. This is not the time to partner or empathize with the obvious destructive tendencies and practices of Sodom and Gomorrah. This is never the time. We must remain focused and strong in the faith of our Father, in order to escape their allurements, the deceiving, seducing, enticing spirits, the fun fear of Sodom and Gomorrah must not take us away from the Lord. The faith of our fathers must remain in us. We must grow in them. Otherwise, we will be taken, we will be overtaken by the seducing, enticing, deceiving spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah of this modern time. Sodom and Gomorrah is a topology of strange, devilish behaviors before God. They have their subtle mode of operations, which can easily sway any careless believer into error. Usually, you need to understand, Sodom and Gomorrah pretends to be up, to be up and doing and up to date in civilization and outward morality. Unfortunately, people fall sheepishly into their delusional antics. As a child of God, you need adequate information. You need deep teachings of God's word. You need total obedience to the heavenly manual for, for as an earthly believer sojourning towards heaven. I tell you the truth. For you to escape the delusional satanic antics of Sodom and Gomorrah of our time, total obedience is inevitable. Total obedience is needful, is necessary, is compulsory for earthly believers in Christ Jesus. I must tell you plainly, 
that the closer we are to the coming of the Lord, the tougher the battle of faith against your soul. The tougher the battle of faith against your soul. Therefore, you need to wake up as a child of God. The time is short. The time is short. Our departure flight is around the corner. Jesus is coming. He could come this very moment you are hearing this message. How prepared are you for his coming? Get your luggage perfectly ready, perfectly prepared. And then look around to see if anything is missing in your heavenly passport. Get it corrected immediately. After the sounding of the trumpet, there is nothing you can correct. There is nothing to rectify. There is nothing to amend. There is nothing to change. There is nothing to improve. There is nothing to beg God for. You will be left behind. Child of God, the time is short. You can't afford to miss the rapture. You can't afford to be left behind. You wouldn't forgive yourself. You can't take it. You can't afford to be, to be left behind. You wouldn't forgive yourself. If the rapture takes place and you are left behind, you wouldn't forgive yourself. The time is short. Don't fall out of the faith. The time is short. Don't go back to Egypt. The time is short. Don't consider any offer from Sodom and Gomorrah. The time is short. Fix your eyes on Christ and Christ alone. The time is short. Fix your gaze on the finishing line. The time is short. Ever slow down on the highway of holiness until you breast the tape of victory in this race. The time is short. I feel like telling you, that the modern day Sodom and Gomorrah will usher in the coming of a Messiah in no distant time from now. Always remind yourself about this salient truth. The coming of the Lord is at hand. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. The coming of the Lord is at hand. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Don't doze up. No wonder Jesus gave the warning to his disciples in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. He said, Watch it therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. If you listen to the news, if you sample opinions of people around you, if you notice the famine in the land, the drought in the land, the wickedness in the land, the killings in the land, the evils in the land, you understand that the prophecies of Jesus is being daily fulfilled in our very eyes. Watch and pray. The time is short. I divide the message into three parts very, very briefly. Number one, characteristics of Sodom and Gomorrah. Point number two, how to be rapture ready. Point number three, victims of perdition. Victims of perdition. How I wish that popular preachers of our time Big, big churches, mega churches, global churches. I want Joto Tife, Kaka, Kriorila, Deji. Oh, I wish that their leaders, their general overseers, their, their, their general superintendent, their president will come out with something like this to wake up the believers that are sleeping and dangerously marching to hell unknowingly. The time is short. Characteristics of Sodom and Gomorrah. I just read it to you in Isaiah chapter 1, from verse 1 to 8, and in particular verse 10. No soundness anymore, no sound teachings anymore. Sinners are no longer repenting. Backsliders no longer want to come back to the Lord. And the evils are prevailing in our land because the preachers are sleeping. The preachers are dosing. The preachers have gone into fun fear. The preachers are just doing, they are just, uh, they are just doing merry, merriment everywhere. They are no longer contending earnestness. When the Bible says in Jude verse 3, Jude verse 3, it said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith 
which was once delivered unto the saints, earnestly contending for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. This is not the kind of faith that Smith, I mean, Smith Wigglesworth practiced. Apostle Yodili Babalola, Apostle Badari. This is not the kind of faith they practiced. This is not the kind of faith that Jaco, John Lake, Peter Wagner. This is not the kind of faith that William Braham. This is not the kind of faith they practiced. Their faith was dogged. Was dogged. Alexander Dewey. This is not the kind of faith they practiced. Safalarola, this is not the kind of faith they practiced. Their faith was convincing, convicting, and converting. Before they open their mouth, people get converted. The kind of faith that this man, Billy Graham, preached and practiced, that's not the kind of faith we are practicing today. That's why the world has no regard for the church and the ministers of God anymore. The bloggers are free to say anything about the church, about us. We gave them the opportunity, we gave them the audacity to castigate and lambast us. Why? Because we have fallen and we have refused to get up from the ground. Characteristics of Sodom and Gomorrah. Number one, sin mockery. Sin mockery. People mock at sin. Instead of repenting from their sins, they mock at sin. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14 verse 9, it said, it said uh, sinners make mock at sin. Make mock at sin. Number two, fun fear. See fun everywhere. Fun, even in the church. That's why we bring comedians to the pulpit. And uh, we preach halfway. We sit down to make ourselves happy. Happy in sin. Happy in backsliding. Happy in satanic worship. Happy in God's anger. Happy in God's displeasure. And nobody is telling us that we are in danger. The time is short. Number three, deception and hypocrisy. Preachers of our time preaches deceptively. They preach hypocritically. They don't hit the nail at the head. Mocking God and his servants. You see it in our time. Just as they mocked the preacher of righteousness of those days, particularly Noah in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Even so it is in our time, they are mocking us, mocking us. Go and look at faithful churches and faithful ministers of God who are preaching the truth undilutedly. Members are usually scanty in their churches, but they don't care because the greatest church the biggest church before God is a church with 50 members and 49 of them have their names written down in the book of life. That's the biggest church as far as heaven is concerned. You may have, you may have 2 million members and if you do not have you know, two third of that population you know, in the book of life, your labor is in vain. You are not working for God. You are working for yourself. You are receiving profit in the ministry that God has called you to do. And you refuse to bring profit to him. Let's wait and see how your judgment will look like on the final day. We see provenity. Provenity everywhere. Sexual perversion. Everywhere, all over the world today. It pains me. I do not have enough time to explain all this one by one to details. You will have known that I know what I'm talking about and I, I, I understand the reasons behind this topic which the Holy Ghost is giving to us as the first message in our time. Forgetting God. Presidents of the world has forgotten God. Governors of the world, local government chairmen have forgotten God. Complaint owners are forgotten God. Institutions are forgotten God. VC of universities are forgotten God. Pastors and church members are forgotten God. See the way people forget God in their plans today. Sin on the altar. Go to several altars in different churches. You see sin being publicly displayed. This is sinful in the sight of God. Another thing is unimaginable wickedness. Wickedness, pastors killing themselves. 
pastors destroying themselves, pastors castigating themselves, pastors judging themselves. They left the work of God they ought to do. They are attacking their personalities, attacking their own work, and they refuse to focus on what God has called them to do, on imaginable wickedness, covetousness, and greediness. Greediness all over, all over, particularly in the church. What a shame. Point number two, how to be rapture ready. If the world has gotten to this level, if the world is disrupting, stinking, smelling in the sight of God, if the world has become like a nocturnal animal before the law, if the world angers God, if the world forgets God, if the world is saying no to Jesus, how can a believer in this wicked, adulterous, and perverted generation get ready for the imminent rapture? How can you be rapture ready? How can you package your heavenly luggage properly? How can you ensure that your passport is up to date? and your passport will be accepted in the gate of heaven? How can you ensure that your name is written in the book of life and that the trumpet sounds you are not left behind? Number one, get properly saved. Get properly saved. If you are saved, you will know. If you are half-baked as a Christian, you will know. If you are deceiving yourself, you will know. There is nothing you are doing that you do not know. And most of the things you do, you do them deliberately. So, come and accept Jesus deliberately today. Act of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent it, therefore, and be converted. Repent it, therefore, and be converted. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. It tells us with the mouth, uh, confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart, uh, man believeth unto righteousness. You must consciously, you must deliberately, intentionally confess your sins and come out of them and surrender your life to Jesus. Only then you will be raptured, ready, and then you start living a holy life, holy life, holy life, holy life. Holy Holiness in talking, holiness in dressing, holiness in the choice of job you do, holiness in the choice of friendship and association, holiness in wherever you go, holiness in the look, holiness everywhere, inside out. As he who has called you is holy, be you holy in all manner of conversation. Be holy, be holy, be righteous, be holy, be righteous, be holy, be righteous, be purified, be sanctified. Don't be sanctimonious. Be sanctified in the sight of God. Number two, at Attend a good church, a good church where your pastor will not moot his mouth on eternal matters and realities. Attend a good church where the pastor will not moot his mouth. He preaches the truth undilutedly. And every day as you come to the Bible study, the prayer meeting, the Sunday worship, the Sunday school, the VG, any program at all in your church, special programs, you know, it could be anniversary, it could be convention, it could be retreat, it could be anything. You you do in your church, popular programs you do in your church, it will be based on, on eternal matters, eternal realities, because he does not want his, his you know, church members to, to be lost. He wants them in the kingdom of God. Attend a good church, a Bible believing church, a Bible preaching church, a Bible, a Bible believing church, a Bible monitoring church, what they preach, they monitor in the lives of their church members, a church where your pastor will not move his mouth on eternal matters and eternal realities attend a church like this and then watch and pray watch and pray watch and pray so that you will not doze away you so that you will not become sluggish Watch and pray. Watch and pray so that your life will not be lost, so that you won't go back to your vomit. Watch and pray. Live a holy life. Live a holy life. And then don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive yourself. If your church cannot help you, you know, help yourself. If your church cannot change you, change your church. If your pastor cannot change you, change your pastor. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, from verse 1 to 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. 
but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Because we are expecting the coming of the Lord, we don't want him to come and leave us behind. We don't want him to come and we are disqualified. We don't want him to come and we are condemned. We don't want him to come and we do not go with him. What are we going to do? Verse 3. Because of this expectation in our hearts, the Bible enjoys and admonishes us. It said, every man, every man is every man, male and female, young and old, educated and illiterate, pastors and church members. Every man that has this hope in him, purify himself even as he is pure. It's only purification of your heart and of your life that will qualify you for heaven. If you are not pure, it doesn't matter what you are doing in the house of God. The trumpet will sound, you will not go, you will be left behind. You will cry, you will sob, you will regret every opportunity you wasted, every opportunity you did not use well, every opportunity you treated with a kick gloves, you will regret it. I pray that the Lord will keep you rapture ready and at any time the trumpet sounds regardless of where it meets you on your bed, in your office, in your car, on your way to the office, in the market, in the church, you you are teaching, you are sleeping, you are praying, whatever you are doing, you are rapture ready in Jesus' name. Point number three, victims of perdition. Oh, God. Oh, God. May I never be one of them. May my wife or any of my children be one of them. And you will never be one of them too in Jesus' name. Victims of perdition, that is, those who will perish, those who will be destroyed. Those who will go to hell and those who will graduate from hellfire to the lake of fire. Maybe you don't understand. There is a disparity between hellfire and the lake of fire. The moment a sinner dies now, his soul alone goes to hellfire. But after the white throne judgment, his soul will come and locate his body. In the, before the white throne judgment, I beg your pardon, his soul will come and locate his body where, wherever he was buried. Both the soul and the body will cleave together and they will be thrown into the lake of fire. Hell fire will be thrown into the lake of fire. You need to understand what lies ahead of you. Your creation is not just for you to make money and transact business all over the world and become famous. No, that's not the purpose for which God created you. He created you to showcase His glory, His glamour, His beauty, His honor. He created you to worship Him. He created you to love Him and cherish all that He has deposited in you. He wants you to become an extension of his existence before the people so that as people look at you they see God, they repent and give their lives to Jesus. That's the purpose for which God created you. All other things you are running after now we are month to nothing when your breath is taken away from you and your breath can be taken right now. It can be taken this evening. It can be taken tomorrow morning. It can be taken before the month ends. It can be taken even on December 25th or even January 1st. I've seen people dying on January 1st after they said happy new year they rejoiced they shouted they danced for seeing a new year and a minute after that god called them to glory eternity came knocking and they couldn't deflect they couldn't destroy it. they couldn't say no they accepted the eternal home going unfortunately they weren't prepared they are now in hell don't be like that victims of perdition number one the unteachables. If we are teaching you the word of God and we are showing you the word of God and you are seeing us, we who teaches you the word of God, you are seeing us that those things we teach can be seen in our lives. We are not living a dubious spiritual you know, lifestyle, no dubious spiritual identity in us. You could see how transparent we were. You could see what we are doing, what we are preaching and what we are doing. They agree together. You know we are not deceivers. What we teach is seen in us. What stops you from imbibing the same spirit? What stops you from accepting the way of salvation? Look here. It's not easy to please God. Though. It's not easy at 
taught to please God. If anybody tells you it is very easy to please God, he has deceived you and you never knew. It's not easy to serve the Lord. It's not easy to live a holy life. It's by the grace of God. When the grace of God comes upon your life, it simplifies holy living for you. The grace of God is not given as a license to go sinning. It's given to simplify the assignment you have do's and don'ts for you to remain holy as a child of God. There are things you must not do. There are things you must not say. There are places you must not be found to live holy. If you are found there, you are guilty. The Bible says you run away from the appearances of evil. The unteachables will teach you and yet you go ahead to do what pleases you. You will miss the rapture. You will perish on the last day. Number two, the disobedient. After you are taught, you know what to do. You disobey them. You are preparing for perdition. Number three, the filthy and defied. You are filthy and you are defied. You will perish unless you come out of defilement and filthiness. Number four, the traditionalist and religionist. I'm, I'm afraid at seeing what I am seeing now. I discovered that our youths have gone back to traditional worship. They are back in idol worship, and they are so proud at it. They do it joyfully. They are now chanting incantations, and they are eating alligator pepper. A lot of them are back in charms. A lot of them are back in idol worship, and the church has refused to wake up. Religionists, you are just being religious. You are an elder, but you have no name in the book of life. You are a deacon, no name in the book of life. You are a vicar. You are a canon. You are a reverend father. You have no name in the book of life. You are a pope. You have no name in the book of life. You are a cardinal. You have no name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You are only being religious. Her fire is awaiting you. When you die like that, no name in the book of life, it were better you were never born. Number five, idol worshippers. Number six, the mere church goers. Number seven, whosoever dies in sin. Number eight, secret sinners in the church. We see you as, as a saint, unknown to us that you are a secret sinner. Secret sin in the world is an open scandal in heaven. We will know. We will see it on the last day. If you like, repent now. If you like, cover your sin. Remember, he that covereth his sin shall never prosper. Number nine, fake gospel ministers. They are everywhere. Let them have this word because heaven will never be, be theirs. Heaven will never be theirs. They won't make heaven. If you are fake on the pulpit, you will make heaven. Rebels in the church, that church, you are one of the people scattering that church. You don't want that church to progress. You don't want that church to develop. You don't want that church to grow. The words of your mouth are bad. Your attitude, your involvement in that church, your contribution in that church is, bringing the, is making the church backward. Don't worry. When the trumpet sounds, you become the pastor of he goats like yourself. And when you leave this world, you go to hell. I call you he goats because what you are doing is the attitude of the he goats. It's your attitude I'm referring to, not your personality per se. Your attitude is the attitude of he goats. Of he goats. Not only that, those who will miss the rapture. Higher. I will never miss it. I will never miss the rapture. God will help me. He will give me enough grace to remain prepared for the rapture. Number 12, the unrepentant, wicked, and impenitent souls, and then more casts of God. Anyone whose name cannot be found in the book of life, uh, we perish as I close. Revelation chapter 20, verses 8 and 27. Revelation chapter 20, verses 8 and 27. But the, the fearful and unbeliever and the abominable and murderers and all mongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second dead. Before I go to verse 27, in fact, let me go there, let me go there. Verse 27 of the same chapter of the book of Revelation. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, 
or make it a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. If your name is missing the book of life, prepare for her fire. You'll be there forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Some went to hell last night. Some went to hell this morning. Some are going to hell right now as you are hearing this message. Sir, don't go to hell. Ma, don't go to hell. Brothers and sisters, put your house in order. The time is short. Revelation chapter 20 from verse 11. Revelation chapter 20 from verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from his face the earth and the earth fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the dead and the hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Them. And they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever, and whosoever, and whosoever, and whosoever, and whosoever, and whosoever, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life, 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 was cast into the lake of fire. Think about it.